In this video, I'll show you how you can create a toggle for your audio files. I got a message from Rachel who was looking for a solution to be able to toggle the playback of her audio files on each individual slide. She wanted to have a button that would play the audio, but when you pressed it a second time, it would turn off that audio as well. So I worked with her to come up with the following solution. So let me first of all explain what I have on my slide here. So I have four shapes used as buttons. I've removed the rollover and the down states. I've also added as an optional component to this interaction, just some text on screen. I'm a big believer in that if you're going to play audio narration, you should have the text on screen. And since the only type of audio that you can assign closed caption to is slide audio, and this is triggered audio, I decided to add a click to reveal type function to this interaction. And I can just scroll through the different object states of this object to show you the four different states associated with this. But really what we're just focusing on is the ability to play audio, when I click one of these buttons, click it a second time to turn off the audio, or click another smart shape used as a button to start a new piece of audio and of course stop the previous audio as well. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we need is we need four variables. One to keep track of each of these four audio buttons here. So I'm gonna click on my project dropdown menu and select variables and I'm gonna add new variables here. Underscore audio zero one. I'm gonna give it an initial value of zero. Press save. Underscore audio zero two. Also a value of zero. Underscore audio three, zero value. And underscore audio zero four. Also with a value of zero. So I'll hit save. And I can go ahead and close this. Now, there is a possibility that learners will return to this slide after visiting it the first time. And we may wish to reset the value of those variables if they've changed. So I'm going to write an on enter advanced action. I'm going to click on the actions tab of the slide. And we're going to select on enter, execute advanced actions. We don't have any advanced actions written so far. So I'm going to click on the folder icon to open my advanced action window. And this is going to be called audio reset. And I'm simply going to assign audio 01 with the literal value of zero. So every time I come to this slide, these variables will get reset back to their original value. So once I have them all in, I can save this as an action, click OK and click close. And you'll notice that my on enter advanced action is already selecting audio reset. Now I'm going to write the advanced action for the first of my four buttons. I'm going to select project and select advanced actions to open up the advanced action window. And the first one we're going to call button 01. Now in this case, we're checking to see if our variable associated with button one has one of two different conditions. So to do that, we're going to need to select the conditional tab, and that allows us to create essentially an if then else situation. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at the variable audio zero one, and see if it's equal to the literal value of zero. If it is, we're going to perform the following actions. First, we want to stop any triggered audio. Triggered audio is any audio that's played from an action or an advanced action. And we're going to select the action for that. Simply stop triggered audio. Next, we're going to play the audio file associated with button one. I've already imported all four of my audio files into the project library, so we can simply access that right from here. So I'm going to use the action play audio. I'm going to double click on select an audio file, 
to select the first of my four WAV files associated with this interaction. Next, we're going to assign our variable audio01 with a literal value of one to designate that it's now playing that audio file. In case one of the other three audio files was playing first, we're going to assign audio02 with a literal value of zero. Same thing for audio three. And lastly, assign audio zero four also with zero. This wasn't part of Rachel's solution, but remember I do have that multi-state object on the slide that I want to update and display the text associated with the narration for audio one. So I'm going to change the state of my multi-state object to step number one. Now, again, this is a conditional advanced action, so I'm checking the condition of audio zero one to see if it has one of two conditions. So if it's zero, we're gonna run these actions, but if it's already been assigned a value of one, we're gonna run a different set of actions, but very similar to what we have here. So I can actually select all of these items, copy them, go down to my else statement here, and we'll paste them in here. We're still going to stop triggered audio, but we're no longer going to play an audio file. So I can delete this second line. And the other thing we need to do is change the assignment of audio 01 to 0, because at this point it will have stopped playing. Now, I can also change the state of my multi-state object back to its transparent normal state, and that's easily done here. Now, I can save this as an action, and you might be thinking to yourself, I need to write three more advanced actions. That seems like a lot of work. The advantage of Adobe Captivate Advanced Actions is that you can duplicate much of this work by using the Duplicate Action button up here in the upper right-hand corner. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to create an exact copy of button 01. I just need to relabel it to be button 02. We're going to change which variable we're checking. In this case, we'll be looking at audio 02. We're still going to stop triggered audio. We are going to play a different audio file. So I'm going to choose the second of my two WAV files. Click OK and we're going to change which variable we're updating instead of one it will now be updating 0 2 to a literal value of one we're going to change the state of our multi-state object to step number two incidentally our else statement doesn't need to change at all because this is resetting everything back to normal or zero and stopping the triggered audio so we already have button two completed. So I can update that action, click OK, and we'll duplicate it another time here. We'll relabel this button 03. We'll change which variable we're working with. And we'll change which audio file we're playing. Change the audio two assignment back to zero and audio three will now be assigned the literal value of one. And of course, we'll change our multi-state object to three. And like before, there's nothing to change on the else section. So I can update this action, click OK, and we'll duplicate it once more. Button zero four, we're now working with variable audio four, and we will change which audio file we're playing assign audio three with the literal value of zero and assign audio zero four with the literal value of one and of course change step number three to step number four i'm going to update that action click ok and click close the last thing we need to do is to assign these advanced actions we've created to our four shapes used as buttons so I can actually select them all and under the actions tab change their default action from go to next slide 
to execute advanced actions. And then what we can do is select button one. So now they're all set to run button one script. We'll just change button two to the button two script, button three to the button three script, and button four to the button four script. And I think we're good to go. Let's test this out and make sure it works. The first thing we'll do is we'll click on each of the buttons to make sure they toggle their individual audio files on and off. And then we'll also make sure that other buttons interrupt the first button's audio with the new audio. So let's preview HTML5 in browser. So here we go. Let's first of all click button one and then press it again to see if it interrupts its original audio. Describe the behavior. Be specific. Perfect. Express your feelings using I statements. Don't specify the new type of behavior. Identify the consequences. Final. So that all works. Let's press them all one by one and see if one interrupts the other. Describe the behavior. Express your feelings using I statement. Specify the new type of behavior. Identify the consequences. Fine. So as you can see, this interaction works exactly like Rachel wanted. And of course, and you can all use the same interaction if you need something like an on-off audio toggle in your e-learning projects. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.